Dave Moody, host of Sirius XM Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Channel 90. Following is a special race fans town hall meeting on Jackaroot's wind tunnel. This town hall is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, advancing the next generation of drivers and champions. Here's your host, Jackaroot. Many thanks to Sirius XM's Dave Moody for that introduction. Welcome everyone to what I hope will be an entertaining and more importantly, informative session involving our panel and most importantly, you the race fan. Now we'll open the town hall in a couple of minutes, but first we do have a couple of things that we need to take care of. If you're a regular subscriber, you know what's coming next. It's time for news and notes. NASCAR's top three series took the Easter weekend off, and the IndyCar Brigade continued their countdown to their season opener at Barber Motorsports Park. But there was some short track action over the holiday weekend, and for more on that, here's PRN's at the track, Lenny Batiki. Hey, Jack. Great to be back on Wind Tunnel with this week's NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series Race Report. It will start out in Virginia at Langley Speedway, where defending track champion Brendan Butterbean Queen took the win. At Dominion Raceway, it was Doug Barnes Jr. North Carolina's Wake County Speedway went to Zachary Marks. South Carolina's Greenville Pickett Speedway saw Magnum Tate in victory lane. And across the state at Florence Motor Speedway, NASCAR Xfinity Series driver and the driver of the Junior Motorsports 88, Josh Berry, parked it in victory lane. A couple of NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series tracks ran special non-points events. At Hickory Motor Speedway in North Carolina, they ran their traditional Easter Bunny event. And coming down from New Hampshire, Derek Griffith won that one. At South Boston Speedway, the Modifieds were the stars of the show. And NASCAR Cup Series racer Ryan Priest ended up with the checkers. That's our report. Thanks for having us. Check out GoPRN.com to hear our shows. Please give us a follow at PRN's At The Track. So long, Jack. We're just minutes away from welcoming all of you, but we have some pretty exciting news on the NASCAR home tracks front, and that is the focus of this week's Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series Victory Lap. I'm Kyle Ricky from MRN Radio, the voice of NASCAR. They are the foundation of American motorsports, the launching pad for racing's future. Time now for the Advanced Auto Parts Victory Lap. Brought to you by the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. Driving local racing in local communities forward. Advanced Auto Parts has announced a grassroots program that celebrates the connection between NASCAR's short tracks, their communities, and their passionate fans. It's called the Advanced My Track Challenge. And for more, here's a member of the Advanced Auto Parts team, NASCAR Cup star Ryan Blair. Advanced Auto Parts has partnered with NASCAR in an effort to support hometown racetracks and plant their flag in local racing communities. They're starting a program called the Advanced My Track Challenge, where they're awarding one local track $50,000 to help their efforts in advancing their track and fan experience. 22 tracks submitted entries to the Advanced Auto Parts My Track Challenge. Let's meet them right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Adams County Speedway in Corning, Iowa, home of the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series. My name is Michelle Lackey Maynard, and I am the lady track boss at Alaska Raceway Park. Nobody has done a better job than the Lackey family at keeping this facility alive. I'd like to share with you what my NASCAR home track means to our local community. All-American Speedway opened in 1955 and has been the gathering spot for Roseville residents and the Sacramento region. The first green flag went in the air in 1951 at a little dirt track just outside Grand Rapids, Michigan. Ah yes, the tradition was born. Berlin Raceway, the place to be on Saturday nights. Hello, I am Jim Nordhaugen. My wife and I, Sue, have owned and operated Colorado National Speedway for 16 years. Goose Bay Speedway is a 3 8 mile dirt track located on the Oregon coast where the action's hot, but the weather's not. We're Steve Brett. I'm the promoter and owner at Dominion Raceway Entertainment. We are a multifaceted 
racing and entertainment venue. Fairly new, 2016 was our first year of operation. We're located here in Central Virginia. Edmonton International Raceway, Alberta, Canada. Edmonton International started 50 years ago as a dirt track, but is now a quarter mile asphalt facility. Eastbound International Speedway, Avondale, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Dirt track here or something like that? Uh, about uh, 10 or 15 years ago, they built a dirt track, got people interested in racing. I wanted to bring Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and the opportunity to get into the higher level NASCAR. Evergreen Speedway is entering our 67th year of operation. Beginning life as an oversized 5 8 mile dirt horse racing track in 1954, Evergreen Speedway was later paved and has hosted many of NASCAR's largest Grand National and West Touring events for more than 50 years. There is local education, all of it can benefit from the racetracks and we do that through Florence Motor Speedway in a few different ways. There are local community businesses that are packed out on race weekends. For 73 years, the high banks of Hudson has been a pillar of the greater Nashua community. In that time, commerce has built in to the point where in the western shadow off turn two, a steel fabrication facility was looking at purchasing the hollow grounds. Local racer Ben Bozowski swooped in in early 2018, and he said one thing, let's go racing. Lacrosse Fairground Speedway is located on the Lacrosse Interstate Fairgrounds and is home to many community events, including the annual county fair. Constructed in 1957, the racetrack was originally a dirt surface to host a popular event of the era, horse racing, plus stock car racing. The first impressions of the track, it's home. Uh, a lot of things make Lakeside unique. Obviously the size makes it unique and the history. Uh, we celebrate our 67th season this year, the uh, first one 1955. So Langley Speed was one of the most historic tracks in NASCAR. This place started running stock car races back in 1950 and has run just about continuous up here until 2021. As it has since it was carved out of the Meridian Idaho Dairylands, Meridian Speedway continues to bring generations of fans and racers together. Our track is so rich in history. It started back in 1966. It actually started as a dirt track and then like a year later was turned to asphalt. It's been said, if you could win at New Smyrna Speedway, you can win anywhere. Riverhead Raceway, located 77 miles east of New York City off the famed Long Island Expressway, will celebrate its 71st anniversary season in 2021. I'm Kristen Davis with the Solano High Bank Speedway. Our track is unique due to the fact that we have an 18 degree high bank speedway that is the fastest track in Oklahoma. We're also located right next to Lake Hudson and we have a steakhouse located on our second floor. Cars, community, and caring. Racing lives and thrives in Southern New England. Join us on a trip to Seacock Speedway where memories are made. South Boston Speedway, it doesn't get any more story than that. Sobo is most known is located in South Boston, Virginia, a beautiful small town in Southside, Virginia, just above the North Carolina state line. I'm Charlie Hansen, promoter of Wake County Speedway, North Carolina's newest and only NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts weekly series, Friday night home track. Get out there and vote for your local racetrack. The next generation of drivers will be happy that you did. Be sure to join us again next week for another trip to racing's grassroots with the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Victory Lab. Brought to you by the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. Advancing the next generation of drivers and champions. I'm Kyle Rickey from the Motor Racing Network. When we return, we will open our town meeting and let you, the racing fan, make your voice heard. Right here on Jack of Roots. With Advance Auto Parts, you can get the part you need from the comfort of your garage. We have a wide variety of parts in stock, and you can get them fast. Order online with Advance Same Day and get your part with Same Day Pickup in-store, Same Day Curbside, or Same Day Delivery. It's the fastest way to get the part you need, where you need it, when you need it. Advance your auto at Advance Auto Parts and participate in CarQuest locations. See store for details. Well, you heard the gavel, and that can mean only one thing. It's time to call our special Wind Tunnel Town Meeting to order. 
Welcome to all of you. And please welcome our panel from NASCAR, Brandon Nagalski, Managing Director, Touring and Weekly Series, Sustainability at NASCAR. From the NTT IndyCar Series, Vice President of Communications, Dave First. From Advanced Auto Parts and their marketing team, Matt Davis. And from the Performance Racing Network, the host of PRN's At The Track, Lenny Baticki. Gentlemen, to all of you, welcome to the Wind Tunnel. All right, folks, let me start with you, Brandon. I know that your concentration is on the weekly series programs in NASCAR now, but your family has operated Pocono since it was built, and you've got your short track uh, experience at places like South Boston. So you, you kind of have a unique perspective. And I'm mm-hmm. wondering, what are the different challenges that you think each of the tracks whether they're a super speedway or a short track face. And are there similarities? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, with, with, with the, the cup tracks and the, and the home tracks, there's definitely similarities because you, you know, it's, it's, it's racing at the end of the day. Right. But there's definitely a lot of, a lot of dissimilar things that it's just in the size and scale and scope, but there are many things such as community, right. And working within the communities and, and drawing the fans in and the businesses um, that, that each of those tracks, whether it's the, you know, the big cup track or the local, uh, the local home track um, that are, that are really kind of embracing and, and working with the, uh, with the local uh, communities and, and those that are, that are there. Um, you know, whether it's, it's dealing with the, 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 the weekly series drivers and teams um, or whether you're dealing with the cup series teams, at the end of the day, their drivers, their teams, their crews. Um, and there's a lot of similarities there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just a scaling of operation, um, at the end of the day when it's, when it's all said and done, but, but it's, it's, I will definitely say that on the home track side, it is much more of a personalized feel. Um, that's a lot easier. You're more ingrained in the local community. People know, you know, know who everybody is. Um, the sponsors that are at those tracks are typically more, you know, more likely going to be your, your local businesses um that uh, that that you can go out and support um you know versus the national brands which obviously you can support but it, it, it gives you that more that that shop local feel and sometimes matt davis you get a local flair to a national company such as yours you guys jumped on board last season uh taking up the sponsorship of nascar's weekly tracks despite covid19 why well, it ties us to the community. So as Brandon said, you know, there's these big national chains, but, you know, when it comes to these tracks, there's a local flair, local feeling. And all of our stores have, you know, employees that are committed to the local community. So um, while we are a national um, chain, we've got over, you know, 5,000 locations across North America. We Every store is ingrained in the local community and the, in the NASCAR weekly series and our partnership with NASCAR just continues to build that partnership with, with the local community. And like I say, the local racetrack is like the Friday night late football in many, many communities. So um, Friday and Saturday nights, you see, you know, you see our customers, you see the employees, you see their families. They're at that track, either watching, watching their neighbor or competing. And it's a, it's a great way for us to just continue to be part of the community. Lenny, you've had the opportunity through PRNs at the track and your your love of short track racing to see uh, the advantages that these local racetracks and their competitors are enjoying thanks to Advance jumping on board. Can you give me some specifics? Well, the Advance by Track program is the easiest one because it's the one now, but just the signage and really taking it from their bricks and mortar to the pavement and grandstands of the grassroots track bringing people out, even just the, the handful that were quickly rattled off there, you know, a couple of employees, a couple of uh, family members, that's five, six, eight new tickets that are headed out to the racetrack. And that's important to a grassroots track. And then that flows throughout the week where those drivers and teams can now go in and they've got somebody behind the counter that when they say, hey, I race mini stock at South Boston. Oh yeah, I saw you. Yeah, what happened to your car? Well, here's why I'm here. You know, battery, <laughs> need one. and um, you know, I, I think that connectivity with a, uh, a a store that's got such a national footprint like Advanced Auto Parts that uh, I, I think it brings more cachet to what they do. Dave, first thirty or forty years ago, if you won the USAC Triple Crown, 
you generally had your ticket punch to maybe get a one-off ride in the Indianapolis 500, but there's no longer that correlation. And yet there seems to be a strong tie in for, if you want to pursue a future in IndyCar, the best place to start is with go-karts. Yeah, that's, it, it's interesting to see how things have changed certainly over the years, but go-karting is, <laughs> Uh, the way it is, it has gone lately. I mean, look no further than Joseph Newgarden, uh, who, even though he grew up at, down in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, he routinely and his parents, I mean, and, and shout out to all the parents that, that put up with all of this and, and, and mortgage their homes and, and do what it takes to fund their children's desires, or maybe even the parents' desires too, let's be honest sometimes. But uh, so they, Joseph Newgarden and the family would routinely make the drive uh, north to just uh, uh, east of Indianapolis at a great facility that Mark Dismore owns. Jackie, yeah, I know you want, you know Mark, a place called the Newcastle Motorsports Park. Yeah, he threw me out of there one night. <laughs> <laughs> you and a lot of other guys. <laughs> Uh, but Joseph, you know, uh, really learned how to drive at a facility like that. And a lot of kids have done that. Connor Daly has done it on, on the IndyCar side as well. And, and uh, it's just, it's things have changed certainly over the years. And those days of, unfortunately, of the A.J. Foyts and maybe even more re recent vintage, a guy like Tony Stewart, who would hop out of an IndyCar and go to a stock car. Uh, and, and so back and forth, you have no issues with that. John Andretti, the late, great John Andretti as well. Uh, maybe those days are gone, hopefully temporarily, because I love the idea of some of these guys. Uh, it's, you know, we talked about this earlier, uh, you know, racing in whatever series, they just want to race, right? It doesn't matter if it's IndyCar, stock car, what, let them race. I think those were the great days uh, of racing. You think of some of the, the, the greats of AJ and, and Johnny and, and so on and so forth. We'd love to see some of that uh, get back to it. It's a little more specialized certainly uh but karting is certainly the way it, it the things trend right now when it comes to motorsport i i know brandon it's no longer in your purview but you have a you have a deep relationship with nascar's premier divisions as a former track promoter mm -hmm. so from bill france senior to bill france jr who both kind of exercised a uh not a myopic but hands-on family only approach with the exception of Mike Elton to the leadership of Steve Phelps at all nowadays. What, if anything, do you think has changed? Um, I, I, I'll first and foremost, it's still got that family business feel, you know, with, 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 with Jim France and Lisa France Kennedy there um, and Ben Kennedy coming up through the ranks now um, and his great ideas and leadership um, and, and the ability they've, and you know, what they've given Steve, uh, Phelps and, and Steve O'Donnell and, and the entire leadership team, you know, Jill Gregory before she, before she, you know, had left this year. Um, it's, it's been amazing to watch the transition of leadership over the years. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, I've been in this sport a long time. So I've seen a, I've seen a couple of different, different iterations of it. Uh, but I think now with, you know, with, with what they're letting Steve and everybody, um, un, you know, under, under all the Steve's, right do and, and how we're looking at business and how we're kind of running things from top to bottom, whether it's the cup series or whether it's the weekly series. Um, we have a lot of great foundation to work off of. We have a lot of that, that, that family um, passion that's still there that resonates throughout the entire company. And, it, and, and honestly, for it, it, it does feel like a family business, um, a large one, but a family business nonetheless. We should point out, Matt, that it's, it's not just NASCAR and the home track series that Advanced Auto Parts is involved in. You certainly have your associate sponsorship position with Ryan Blaney, but you also extend all the way out to the NTT IndyCar series. Tell us a little bit about that relationship. Sure, so um, with IndyCar, you know, through our partnership with Penske and, and Team Penske in general, we, um, we have a diehard brand part of IndyCar and, and some of the excitement around um, Memorial Day weekend and the Indy 500. Uh, and then, of course, with the Team Penske, we have um, a partnership with Ryan Blaney. We actually have what we call four um, primaries. So we just had one in, in Bristol. And then we'll have some more coming up, Darlington, um, Atlanta, and Richmond. But great partnership, 
with the Penske team, and, and then we um, extend that to our partnership with NASCAR. So we, we love racing. We're even in World of Outlaws with Tony Stewart. So um, we're, we're just about everywhere. I, I want to get each of your reaction uh, to this and more as fans than anything else. Uh, just a little while ago, uh, Roger Penske uh, made some news when he suggested that, look, there should be more of these double headers uh, splitting between Indy cars and, uh, and NASCAR at the Cup Series level. And then he went one step further. And Roger doesn't do anything by happenstance. So I thought it was, in my personal opinion, a trial balloon when he suggested that not necessarily this year or next, but some due diligence should be done by both sanctioning bodies to, dare I say, hold a double header on a temporary street course. Lenny Baticki, I'm going to start with you. What say you? Oh, I think that'd be really cool. I'd love to see Jimmy Johnson there, uh, you know, chatting as an IndyCar driver back to his old uh, Hendrick crew and vice versa. I think the cross-pollinization is, is great. We see it at the Chili Bowl when you've got all the drag racers and you've got NASCAR guys and some IndyCar guys there. I, the, the flavor is awesome. And I think to have two sets of cars and the fans back and forth, I think it'd be really fun. But Brandon, we're talking about a 3,600-pound race car as compared to the 17, 18, 1900 pounds of an Indy car, would they have to bring in more Jersey barrier on temporary courses? <laughs> I'm sure there'd be some of that. And, and, you know, I think the safety guys all, they, they, they salivated getting a chance to figure out how to do things. Right. Um, but I mean, with, with the next gen car, who knows where the possibilities come mm. um, with what the new car is capable of doing. Um, you know, it's, it's not something we've done. Um, and, but, but as you're seeing, you're seeing those, you know, our cars now run more and more road courses. You, you saw the Brickyard last year uh, due to COVID switch to the to, to the road course and run alongside IndyCar. And it was, a, you know, and it's a great weekend. And trucks and IndyCar have run together for years, uh, whether it's at Texas or, or St. Louis, uh, you know, Gateway there. It, it, there's some great, you know, great, uh, great opportunities for, for, for all these sports. I mean, we're, we're the two top, you know, motorsports properties in the United States, one with fenders and one without. Um, and for us to come together, it's, it's, it, I think that would be an exciting opportunity. And, and Roger is Roger Penske, right? And when Roger speaks, everybody listens. Um, but the man is no fool and he's, he's never put his mouth or his money somewhere. He doesn't think it's going it, it, it should be leading for us. We'll continue with our town hall meeting right after you listen to these messages. With advanced auto parts, you can get the part you need from the comfort of your garage. We have a wide variety of parts in stock and you can get them fast. Order online with advanced same day and get your part with same day pickup in store, same day curbside or same day delivery. It's the fastest way to get the part you need, where you need it, when you need it. Advance your auto at Advance Auto Parts and participate in CarQuest locations. See store for details. We continue here on our very special race fan town hall meeting you can get a hold of us by just emailing us at uh, jackaroots wind tunnel at gmail.com lenny i want to circle back to you sure. because we're starting to put together a full schedule of uh, weekly short track racing uh, what's the outlook post covid 19 uh, i think the fans are excited to get back to see their their local heroes and it's close to home they can be in a safe environment. They know that the Cup Series, the Premier Series, has really showcased how you can go as a fan to certain tracks. You could be socially distant. The competitors can be socially distant and it's safe. And I think the bar that was set so high by NASCAR that was able to run a successful season will trickle down into the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. And it'll showcase where, again, we as a community need to come together to keep their, everybody healthy and uh, still have a blast of a time watching cars go around. You know, it's about 375 days ago that uh, the sporting world came to an abrupt halt. Uh, the race at St. Petersburg for the Indy cars after it's on, it's off, it's on again, it's off, uh, ended up being postponed. Uh, the NBA in the middle of the game, we saw what happened there. And we all were subjected to eye racing and nothing against eye racing. It was it was enjoyable. It was entertaining. But then I just personally feel that, again, the cross pollination that we were talking about in the previous segment 
that IndyCar and NASCAR put their shoulder to the wheel, put their heads together. And what I don't think they get enough credit for, Brandon, is the fact that they wrote the manual on how to not circumnavigate the pandemic, but how to exist in the midst of it. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, early April, late March, that uh, John Bobo, our, uh, our vice president of racing operations, put together the, the, the COVID return to racing team. Um, and we were having, I mean, three, four meetings a week. Um, we were all doing it remotely, so we we're trying to figure all that out. Um, but really kind of dove into it. And him and Tom Bryant kind of led the charge, put together our protocols, which we're, you know, we're still using now. We, we're tweaking them. Uh, we brought in some some great infectious disease doctors to to kind of help us along and 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 steer us um, with with looking at the right things. Um, you know, there's so much unknown in the beginning. You didn't you didn't know what you were drawing up. Um, you know, Ben Kennedy and and Steve O'Donnell and Scott Miller up there at the R and D center. They went through 85 different iterations um, of the schedule um, before we finally went running. And and even then, it's we had to make some tweaks along the way, right? Because of just local government protocols, but I think this year, you know, we've started here in, in, with Daytona. We're, what, seven, eight weeks in now. We've had an unbelievable uh, season so far. Uh, you know, m more fans coming in each and every week as, as we go to different markets. But as, as we look, you know, to the, to the weekly, to the Van Fellow Parts weekly series, I think there's, there's a, the fans are starving for entertainment and they're starving for excitement. And to, to Lenny's point, it's community. It's, it's, it's getting them, you know, that short drive from their home to their local, to their local track and, and being able to really kind of build on that. And the tracks that did run towards the end of last year um, that we had fans saw great numbers. And the ones that have been running, you know, early on this year are, are seeing you know, some, some great excitement. I think there's, there's a passion there um, that's been reignited in race fans. Um, and, and I think with what auto van auto parts is doing and really kind of helping us drive that message has been, has been great timing. I mean, maybe coming in the middle of the pandemic, not such great timing, um, for the folks with advanced part, but you know what, they made the best of it. We made the best of it with them. And it's given us a chance to kind of look at things and now run full speed this year, uh, with some great programs that, that, you know, that they've, they've launched and, and, you know, they've on my, my track challenge and, and, you know, putting uh, local tracks on, on the C pillar of, of Blaney's cars when they don't have the, you know, the paint scheme, it, it's been great. And then to, for, for Blaney to go and win and choose local tracks that receive 1200 bucks, um, you know, it, it, it speaks volumes to, to the commitment they've made to, to the sport and to the fans, especially. Matt, I want to expand upon that because the challenges that sports in general faced are no different than the sports. I mean, than the, the challenges that a company like Advance Auto Parts faced in trying to reinvent or reimagine how to stay in business. Uh, were you guys able to, to in any way, shape or form, use your involvement in the NASCAR weekly series to try and enhance that change and that alteration and approach to each and every one of your individual stores? No, definitely. Um, with, with COVID, um, you know, what came about is, you know, we were all about care and speed. And the number one thing we wanted to do is make sure we took care of the customers and we did it with speed. So um, we, we really instituted our um, same day delivery, uh, pick up in store. So a customer can go on our, download our mobile app, go on, order a, a, a part, pull into the store. And just like a pit crew, you know, going in and getting four tires, um, our, our team goes out there, the customer orders a battery or brakes or wipers or anything. They're right out there, take care of the customer and the and the um, customers on their way again. So no, definitely. And, and we really utilized um, NASCAR to carry on that message. So um, same day delivery, uh, making sure all the customers are taken care of and, and really working together as a team. IndyCar making Hi, some new IndyCar making some news, uh, doing a test in Texas, but more importantly, also trying to at least gain some data for their engine suppliers as it applies to, some sort of an increase in horsepower on a push to pass type basis in uh, on the ovals uh, NASCAR, uh, you know, nothing's off the table uh, just this week, flooding the Martinsville speedway, not flooding it like it was at Bristol, Tennessee on Sunday, but <laughs> laying down water and Goodyear testing their, uh, their rain tires or their wet tires with the possibility that, um, it could be integrated into future uh, events on half mile or short tracks. Lenny, my, my question to you, 
Can you imagine uh, in the near future, let's say uh, inclement weather at South Boston Speedway or at Langley or at Merced, uh, and all of a sudden the word goes out it's going to be a wet weather start? Oh, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, I, our, I was VP at RCR when we went to Japan and used the Goodyear wet tires to qualify that day and practice at uh, Motegi. And we were all just wide-eyed watching them come down the straightaway, and they were just hauling right there with the uh, wet tires. Goodyear had their engineers spot on. They did it right back then, and that was, you know, 96, 97. So I think 20-some-odd uh, years further into the future, the Oval is not too far out of reach. They'll work on it. I think they could get it at Martinsville. It would be really cool. Um, you know, maybe uh, have a lifeguard in the flag stand and watch them <laughs> go around. <laughs> it's been a lot of talk, uh, especially with Jimmy Johnson deciding to pursue a second career in, in the NTT IndyCar yeah. series, that there are going to be more NASCAR drivers who have relationships. And that's something the fans don't realize, have very solid relationships with uh, cup drivers, with Xfinity drivers, uh, and, and certainly with the, the Camping World Truck Series that we'll see more cross-pollination. Uh, I know in my conversations on wind tunnel with some of the IndyCar drivers, uh, led by Connor Daly, who already has run some truck events, um, they'd like to give it a go in something as big as the Daytona 500. Well, do, do you see any downside to that? I don't. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, and it, it helps everyone, right? You know, uh, Brandon, I think you would agree when you know when you see, when you see the IndyCar guys uh, give it a go in, in NASCAR. That's awesome. Jimmy Johnson, I think, is going to be one of these stories this season. And keep in mind, I mean, th this is not an easy task for Jimmy, and he's already talked about it, and he realizes that. I think the first couple of times he was he was in an, uh, an IndyCar at Barber Motorsports Park, it was the thrill of a lifetime for him, and, and in some degree, uh, a dream come true as a guy that grew up in California and, and, you know, following the likes of Rick Mears and so on and so forth. But uh, it's not going to be easy. But if anyone's going to get over that hump and succeed, it's Jimmy Johnson because he has, I mean, he has not only stuck to a plan and is going at this full bore. I mean, heck, he's been testing in these F4 cars, looking around where there's nothing but teenagers, you know, 13, 14-year-olds. <laughs> That he's competing in and so just to get up to speed no pun intended i think it's going to be great jimmy's already trimmed a good two three seconds or so from where he started to where he is now It'd be fascinating to see what he does from barber motorsports park our opener april 18th to the end of the season on the streets of long beach he might be the most experienced rookie indycar's ever seen up next want to talk a little bit about well maybe reconnection or a reconnection between the ultimate, whether it's IndyCar or NASCAR and the support level, the grassroots level, where each and every driver that finally makes it to the top got started. We'll do that right here on Jackaroot's Wind Tunnel next. With advanced auto parts, you can get the part you need from the comfort of your garage. We have a wide variety of parts in stock and you can get them fast. Order online with Advanced Same Day and get your part with Same Day Pickup in-store, Same Day Curbside, or Same Day Delivery. It's the fastest way to get the part you need, where you need it, when you need it. Advance your auto at Advance Auto Parts and participate in CarQuest locations. See store for details. We continue here on our very special race fan uh, town hall meeting with our guests from NASCAR, Brandon Agalski, from PRN's uh, At The Track, Lenny Baticki, who is, I'm beginning to realize, has held more jobs than I have during his <laughs> career. And then uh, Matt Davis, who is working diligently to have me play a fill-in role in a future Bruce Willis Advance Auto Parts Die Hard commercial. You know, <laughs> I could be a great villain. We're doing our best. We'll, we'll, we'll find a place for you, Jack. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to circle back because even in my track promoter days, um, it was simply opening up the, the grandstands, putting out the concessions, and then letting 
the drivers go at it. The competition was outstanding. Then all of a sudden, television came on board and the people in the grandstands started to diminish. And as NASCAR at the premier level grew more popular and more popular, there was a there was a big challenge of trying to connect those fans that had never tasted a short track operation to give it a try at their local track. Lenny, you've kind of tracked that. It strikes me that with the the advent of the young guns, not only in NASCAR, but you see what Connor Daly and some of the others in IndyCar are doing by competing at the Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night racetracks, that key, that connection has been reestablished. It, it has, and I think, you know, when, when Dale passed, um, we had a real contraction. Everybody was worried about, we got to do this so right that they, they kind of peeled away some of the things that were a little rough and, and people didn't um, use as much. We lost the contact with just the name of the hometown where the guy was from. And I think that's the most important thing that any announcer can do is to create that hometown, whether it's the local grassroots announcer at South Boston or Mike Joy or anybody else announcing on national TV. Because where you're from, you have instinctive rivals. Already people are going to love you or not love you right away. So now I've got some skin in the game just because that guy's from the other place that I don't like. <laughs> or he's from a place that I do like. Uh, depending on the guy from New York who has got the Boston stuff and a Gamecock shirt, who knows? Easy, but, he's, uh, not from, he's not from New York. Greg yeah, is from New, New Jersey. Okay, but Greg is from where, New Jersey. Where you're from instantly creates that energy for somebody to connect with you. And I think now we're starting to see that more. We're starting to learn where people are from. And as they're celebrated for being from there, that creates a fan base and then it just magnifies on up. And I think that's what's, uh, what's helping all of us. I know this Brandon may be a, what came first, the chicken or the egg question, but it, it, you saw uh, a concerted effort by NASCAR, by its competitors to reconnect and getting the cooperation of, of the NASCAR weekly home tracks. Who came up with that idea? No, it was all me. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, well, it was it was a collective group. It was, a, you know, it, 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 we there was, you know, I think we all started to see that there was a there was a disconnect. And, and um, I, you know, I, when when Jim Franz stepped back in, he's such a you know, he's such an advocate for for grassroots racing. And, you know, I think that was that kind of spearheaded it. And we all started to kind of look at different things that that we can do and how we can do it. And But, you know, it's 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 important to get those ties back and. And there's some drivers that may not have spent a lot of time building themselves at, at, at the local track level, but they, they, ha they have a home track, right? They have a place they came from. And how do we tie that back? And, and that's been, I think, a tremendous piece. And as, as, as we all have learned, you know, over the last, the last year, um, things are a little different. And it's given us an opportunity to, to really kind of dive and think and slow down a bit. Uh, I think in this sport, we all go so fast, just like the cars that it's given us a chance to kind of step back and just really evaluate everything that everybody was doing and how we were doing it, where we were doing it, and, and, and really kind of dive into the pieces that we needed to dive into and give that, that momentum the right, the right position. Hey, before we close this town hall, I want to give each of you guys an opportunity uh, to weigh in on some thoughts about the future. Are we headed in the right direction? Where would you like to see us go over the course of the next, let's say, five years? Lenny Batiki, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, I like the pay-per-views for the grassroots. It gives flexibility within weather and things like that. And uh, if used properly, uh, it can expand their brand, just like television did for uh, the Cup Series and IndyCar. Matt Davis, besides getting me a cameo role in the next uh, Bruce Willis film, uh, what would you like to see accomplished and done in the next five years? Well, for, for one, I love um, what NASCAR and IndyCar and all the series are doing to get the youth involved, the go-karts. I was actually, um, prior to the Bristol race this past week, and I stopped by Kingsport, the local weekly series track. They they have a go-kart track right next door, and 
And the operator said, you know, the kids come at the go-kart track in the afternoon. And then when the big cars track, instead of going home playing video games, they come over and watch the big cars and dream about that. So I think drawing the, the youth in and then everything that's going on with diversity, you know, drawing all the um, females and the minorities and everybody into the sport. Um, it's, a, it's a melting pot. And I don't think there's any better melting pot in America than a, than a racetrack. Um, where else do you see females compete against males on an equal level and, and in many times kick their butt on um, some of these weekly tracks and, and even on the big series. So um, I love where that's going. And then some of the, some of the, what we're doing with electricity and, you know, the, the, um, the hybrids, I think there's going to be, you know, a lot of future development will happen on the racetrack. So that's very exciting for me personally to watch. And Dave, first, we should point out when, when Matt was talking about the influx of females, uh, big news that uh, uh, Peretta Motorsports, the first, at least in my knowledge, wholly owned all female ownership uh, Indy 500 race team, just secured a big time sponsor for the Swiss Miss, uh, uh, Simona Di Silvestro. Uh, that's kind of flown under the radar, has it not? That is a great story. It's, it's going to be a female-led team. Uh, certainly not the first in IndyCar. Sarah Fisher, uh, before her, and the others have done it before. Uh, go back decades, really. Uh, female participation in, in ownership in the series. Uh, but it's, it's certainly a stemmed from a Penske Entertainment uh, idea that uh, let, let's bring in Beth Peretta, who's the owner of Peretta Autosport. Right now, it's only for the Indianapolis 500, but the thought is maybe full-time uh, in 2022. Uh, and then uh, Roger was adamant about uh, the race for uh, diversity and, and inclusion and a uh, young team that's going to start off on the road to Indy. It's called Force Indy. Uh, and they've got a young driver named Miles Rowe, who is just a stud. And I think uh, if his development continues, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the NTT IndyCar series in the next uh, three or four years. Uh, so that that's the future right there. And I think, you know, you talk about the hybrid element in 2023, there's a hybrid element coming to the NTT IndyCar series, uh, the 2.4 liter uh, turbocharged V6. It's still going to be loud. It's still going to be authentic. It's still going to be IndyCar, but there will be that, that hybrid element that's going to give another 100 horsepower boost. And I think, Jack, you know, you know about television. I think it's going to be interesting to see what television looks like in the next five years. Uh, live streaming, I think, might be the, the thing where this is going to end up. Uh, and if that's the case, that that opens the door to a whole nother uh, range of, of viewership, uh, not only in the U.S., but globally as well. So interesting time right now for motorsport. What about you, Brandon? Where do you where do you think we're headed? I think we're in a renaissance. I really, I really think that we're, we're at a turning point um, where you're going to see, you know, drivers that are going to start jumping around to different series. You're going to see diversity and inclusion kind of leading the brigade. You're going to see uh, women rising to the top and, and, and don't be surprised. You got a woman champion um, in, in one of, or, or multiple of the leagues here in the next couple of years. Um, you know, I think you're, there's, there's, there's a, an excitement about racing that, I don't think has been felt nationally in, in, in a few years um, and, and maybe even longer than that. And I think there's, there's an excitement that we saw as we all got back ramp, ramped up last year that it kind of, as the first one's back, it gave everybody, you know, Oh, well, yeah, they, they race cars, um, you know, and, and it's, it's exciting. And, and the fact that anybody can do it, right. You don't, you can go out there and the first thing you do when you're, you know, when you're a kid is you go, Hey, Let's race down the street. Let's race into the driveway. Um, let's race into the hallway. So everybody races, right? Like a sign behind me says, we race. Everybody races. And I think you're, 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 you're going to have this renaissance of, of the sport um, and a tremendous growth and an opportunity with, with drivers, with cars, with, with crew members, with power packages and all of that. It's going to be, a, it's going to be an exciting time to, to see where racing is in, in not just five years, but in two, three years, really. Yeah, I understand you about we race. I saw you elbow Batiki and uh, Davis out of the center square tonight. <laughs> Listen, my, my sincere thanks to all of you, to Dave First from IndyCar, to uh, Brandon Nagalski from NASCAR, Matt Davis from Advanced Auto Parts, and my good buddy Lenny Batiki, who's part of all of our wind tunnel broadcasts uh, with the uh, Advanced Auto Parts weekly series update. To all of you, thank you. 
And uh, hopefully we get to do this again. We'll close out this very special episode of our special fan town hall right after this. With advanced auto parts, you can get the part you need from the comfort of your garage. We have a wide variety of parts in stock and you can get them fast. Order online with Advance Same Day and get your part with Same Day Pickup in-store, Same Day Curbside, or Same Day Delivery. It's the fastest way to get the part you need, where you need it, when you need it. Advance your auto at Advance Auto Parts and participate in CarQuest locations. See store for details. Well, we've come to the end of another wind tunnel session, and as always, I hope that it was both entertaining as well as informative. My thanks to our expert panel, NASCAR's Brandon Nagulski, IndyCar's Dave First, Advance Auto Parts' Matt Davis, and PRN's Lenny Baticki. You know, fans seldom get the chance to tap the leadership of our top motorsport segments, and my hope is that today, you got that chance. Your thoughts, both positive and negative, are always welcome. Just email us at jackarootswindtunnel at gmail.com. That's jackarootswindtunnel at gmail.com. Also, we've launched a new YouTube Wind Tunnel channel, and I hope that you'll visit that as well and get a look behind the scenes and the production of these podcasts. Remember to hit us up on our social media as well. It's at JA Wind Tunnel for both Facebook and Twitter. Now, next week, we'll do it all again, and I hope that you will join us. I'm Jack Aru. We will see you next week right here in the Wind Tunnel. This special race fans town hall meeting has been brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, advancing the next generation of drivers and champions. I'm Dave Moody, host of Sirius XM Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Channel 90. Thanks for joining us.